Okay, so in today's video, I wanna talk about free saving mistakes you might be making and what you should be doing instead. And I hope this will be useful for you if you really want to be able to save much more money this year. Maybe you're trying to save for your first 1K or 5K or 10K. Maybe you're trying to save up for your house deposit or an emergency fund. Whatever it is, if you're currently struggling to save more money, it might be because you are making one of these mistakes, which I probably made in the past too. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the first mistake you might be making when it comes to saving money is the fact that you might not be factoring in both unexpected and expected purchases. So when I'm talking about unexpected and expected purchases, I think one of the things that people don't realize is that most of the time things are either expected or they are unexpected. So when I'm talking about expected, what I mean is that you probably know that you're going to purchase that expense. You probably know that something will come up that you will have to pay for, hence the reason why I say expected. Whereas if we're talking Talking about unexpected purchases, these are purchases that you have to make that you didn't actually expect. So you didn't even know that they would come up, but you may have had to purchase something because something happened that you simply didn't realize would happen. And if you're liking this video so far, then feel free to give me a thumbs up as it really does help to support the channel. Plus it's free. So as an example, when it comes to expected purchases, obviously, since these are things that you anticipate, you already know that you will probably be spending money. Money. So for example, if you typically buy Christmas presents, you know that that is an anticipated purchase because Christmas comes around every single year. The date does not change, it is always there. And so if you know that every single year you buy Christmas presents, well then that will be an expected purchase. Or for example, if you know that you have to buy your car insurance again every single year because it renews every single year and you have a car, well then you know that that is an expected purchase because in order for you to drive that car, it needs to be insured every single year. However, when it comes to unexpected purchases, because these are things that you haven't necessarily anticipated, this can be something like your car breaking down randomly. And so if, for example, you then take it to the garage and they say that you have to replace something in order to fix it, that would then be an unexpected purchase because you didn't anticipate having to buy something else to fix your car. So can you see how with those two situations, one of them you know is gonna come up, whereas the other you probably didn't know would come up. And so there are a couple of mistakes that people tend to make when it comes to expected and unexpected purchases. One of the mistakes that people will make is that they don't treat them differently. And so what they think is that expected purchases and unexpected purchases are the same, when in reality they are not, because one of them you know and expect that it will come up whereas the other you don't and so when you're saving money you need to be preparing for both situations and that leads me on to the second mistake that people tend to make is they may either prepare for one and not the other so you may for example start saving money for an emergency fund because you want to prepare for unexpected expenses which is great however if you are not also preparing for those expected expenses what might happen is that it comes to the time where you have to pay for that expected expense but because you haven't prepared for it either you're going to have to take it out of your paycheck or you may have to end up dipping into your savings which means that you won't be able to save as much money as you wanted and so if I use myself as an example one of the mistakes I made is that I was trying to save without preparing for some of my expected expenses so one of the things that I didn't prepare for was my graduation again Again, I knew that my graduation was going to come because I passed my degree, which was great. And I knew exactly where my graduation was going to be as well. However, what I didn't do is I didn't prepare for that purchase. I didn't prepare for the gown that I had to rent. I didn't prepare for the tickets that I had to buy. And so what happened was when it came to the point where I had to pay for it, because I hadn't actually saved any money separately for that purchase, I then had to dip into my other savings and use that money to pay 
for that expense. And so what that meant is I almost felt like I was taking a step backwards because although I thought I had saved money already, I actually had to use those savings to go and pay for my graduation. And so it's really important that you actually distinguish the two and ask yourself, are you saving up separately for expected purchases and are you also saving up separately for unexpected purchases too? So whenever I'm working with my clients, I will actually get them to create two separate saving pots. And the reason why is because I want them to have one pot where it is literally dedicated to any unexpected purchases or expenses. And so if something comes up and it was completely random and you had no idea this was going to happen, you at least have some savings for that. So if anything does happen, you don't have to dip into your other savings. Like if you're trying to save up for your house deposit, you won't have to dip into those savings because you will have a separate pot for that. Okay, a, this would be an emergency fund. And then I will get them to create another savings pot for expenses that they know will come up. So again, these will be expected purchases. So for example, let's say that when it comes to your birthday, you tend to celebrate big, but sometimes during your birthday month, once you get paid, what typically happens is that your birthday comes up and you have so many things to pay for. And so you end up feeling really broke by the end of the month. And that's something that you want to avoid. Well, because you know that your birthday comes up every single year and you celebrate it every single year, you can classify that as an expected expense. And so what I get my clients to do is actually start saving up for that separately. So by the time it then comes to their birthday, rather than having to use their paycheck and feeling broke at the end of the month, they would have already been saving for it. And so they will literally have a pot of money ready to be spent. And so they can actually use that money to spend on their birthday. And so the beauty of this is because they've already planned for this in advance and they know it's going to come up, they can just start saving up for this little by little. And by the time it gets to the point where they have to use the money, they literally have it sitting in their account. And as I mentioned, this is something that I cover in my one-on-one -on -one money coaching. So if you want to learn more about that, I will leave a link in the description below for you. But when it comes to saving money, one of the key mistakes that people tend to make is that they don't factor in both of these purchases. They don't factor in expected purchases and they don't factor in unexpected purchases. So if you're someone who's currently struggling to save money, ask yourself, am I actually planning for both of these scenarios? Okay, so the second mistake you might be making when it comes to saving money is the fact that you might be struggling to stay on track with any budgeting plan outside of your essential bills. So when it comes to having a plan or having a budget, one of the things that you might realize is that you tend to pay your bills on time. When it comes to paying your bills, that is not a problem. You will pay your rent or mortgage, you'll pay your electricity bill, you'll pay your water bill, you'll pay your phone bill, anything that you would consider an essential bill, you will probably prioritize that and make sure you pay for that. However, when it comes to you actually prioritizing your savings or even having a plan for your spending, that's when things might start to take a turn. And if you are someone who maybe does have a budget, so you do know how much all of your essential bills come to, the problem that you might have is the fact that you are not using your budget to its full potential. And so if you don't really have a plan for your money, so you don't actually know where you want your money to go, you just kind of pay your bills and then that's it. You kind of just let your money run free. Well, then what may happen is that you might end up overspending. And if you end up overspending, you may then have to then dip into your savings. So the money you try to save just becomes non-existent again. Or you may even have to end up going into debt if you find that you actually don't have enough money. And so if you're making this mistake, one of the best things you can do is actually have a plan outside of your essential bills. And what I mean by this is you need to think about a plan for your savings. So you wanna be thinking about how much do you actually want to be saving? And then you also wanna have a plan 
for your spending too. And so again, you want to ask yourself, how much do I want to spend? How do I actually want to spend this money and create a plan for that? And I think that one of the biggest misconceptions people think is that when they're creating a budget or they're creating some type of spending plan, they feel like that budget is there to restrict them. They feel like they can't spend their money if they actually do the budget. When in reality, if you feel like your budget is restricting you, I will 100% say that it is simply because you have decided to restrict yourself. It is simply because you decided to put restrictions on your spending. And I say that because at the end of the day, when you do your budget, who is the one that does the budget? It is you. At the end of the day, when you're thinking about how to plan out your spending, who is the one that does that? It is you. And so if you feel like doing a budget feels restricting, ask yourself, well, if that's the case, why am I restricting myself? Because that's really the question. It's not about the budget because the budget is literally just numbers on a spreadsheet or on a piece of paper. That's all the budget is. Whereas you're the one who will decide how much you want to spend. And so if you're someone who is struggling to save, it could be because you are not planning for things outside of your essential bills. When you start to actually plan for your savings and start to plan for your spending, you will find that actually the more control you have over it the more you are likely to save and again that control does not mean that you have to restrict your spending it simply just means that you're just aware of where your money is going at the end of the day that is it when you know where your money is going you can then make the decision to either save more of that money or spend it but again it is entirely up to you now i know you might also be asking but veronia sometimes i don't really know how i want to spend my money sometimes i have these spontaneous things that I do and I love it because it's spontaneous and I will even say that you can still actually plan for that yes I have clients who have literally created a category for miscellaneous which means that they actually put money aside for anything that's spontaneous so if anything random happens they again still have money for that so you still can plan for your spending whether you know what you're going to be spending your money or not but one of the key reasons why people struggle to save is simply because they have no idea where their money is going and i would also argue that actually this is probably even more important if you are a natural spender like me so if you didn't know i used to spend my whole paycheck every single month to the point where i never even had a savings account and i actually ended up being in debt but what i really is that by planning out my spending and my savings that actually gave me more freedom to spend my money because I knew exactly where my money was going I knew exactly how much I was saving and so when it came to just planning my spending I just needed to think about how I want to spend my money and then just create a plan for it and then that was it and then it gave me free reign to continue to spend my money because I knew that I had planned for it and so if you're someone who is struggling to save really ask yourself are you actually creating a plan outside of your essential bills outside of your rent outside of your mortgage outside of all of your utility bills are you actually creating a plan for your money okay so the third mistake you might be making when it comes to saving money is the fact that you might not be saving the right amount now just to clarify when it comes to saving money there actually isn't a right amount that you should be saving however one of the biggest reasons why people feel guilty about spending money is simply because they feel like they're not saving enough money and the reason why they feel like they're not saving enough money is because they don't actually know how much they should be saving so when I'm talking about saving for the right amount what I mean is that if you don't know how much you should be saving, well then of course you're gonna feel guilty about spending money because you'll probably be thinking that you should be saving more. And so the question you wanna be asking yourself is how much do I want to save? If I have specific savings goals, how much are they? Because if you don't know how much you should be saving, well then how do you know if you're saving the right amount? How do you know if you're even on 
track to reach your specific savings goals. And so for example, if you decided that you really wanna save up for a car, well then you need to be asking yourself, how much do I want to save for that car? And when do I want to save for it? So that you can understand whether you're actually saving a decent amount towards that car. You won't know if you're saving the right amount if you don't even know how much the car costs. And I feel like maybe people don't necessarily do this because they think that maybe there's, you know, some complicated equation and that you have to be a math genius to do it. But really, you don't need to be a math genius to work out how much your savings goal will cost and also figure out when you want to save for it. So you just need to ask yourself, okay, well, how much do I think it's going to cost? It doesn't have to be an absolute number because potentially it could change and that's 100% okay but you just want to have a rough amount the same thing when it comes to your house deposit you want to ask yourself okay well how much do I think I will need for my house deposit and once you have that number that's your savings goal and again you can ask yourself when do I want to save up for my house deposit and then you can work out how much you can realistically save towards that specific goal but one of the biggest things that people don't even do or even just get paralyzed with is actually working out how much they should be saving in the first place but what happens is if you don't do that first step you'll be questioning every single time whether you're actually saving enough but you won't know if you're saving enough if you haven't actually figured out how much you should be saving now if you realize that you've been struggling to save money for months but you have specific savings goals maybe you're trying to save up for your house deposit an emergency fund maybe you're even trying to save up for a car and you have no idea what's going on and you might want a bit more support with that then make sure you do check out my one-on-one -on -one coaching because what I've been able to do is literally help all of my clients have more savings than they've ever had and they've been able to do that without actually having to restrict their spending so they're still able to enjoy their spending but they're also still able to save more money at the same time so make sure you check that out if you haven't already what you can do is just book a free call just just to find out more about working with me so i'll link more information up here for you and in the description below but when it comes to these saving mistakes these were actually mistakes that i personally made and it actually stopped me from saving money but when i worked on them and i was able to factor in both unexpected and expected purchases i created a budgeting plan not only for my bills but also for my savings and my spending too plus when it came to saving i knew if i was saving the right amount once i was able to overcome all of these I went from spending my whole paycheck and literally having pennies at the end of the month to saving over 40% of my income consistently. And so if I was able to do it, I have total faith that you can too. So if you did like this video, then please do give me a thumbs up if you haven't already. And let me know in the comments, are you currently making any of these savings mistakes? I do post every Tuesday. So if you would like to know more, then of course you can subscribe to my channel and I will see you next week.